Is feeding a raw diet to pets actually beneficial to their health, or is it just a fad? There's more debate than ever about what foods are best for your cat, dog, or ferret, even when it comes down to commercial dry food brands. So what's really the deal with raw food? A commercial pet food advocate, as well as many conventional vets, may often bring up the fact that feeding pets a raw meat-based diet is a trend with anecdotal benefits that's gained traction through social media. Media. After all, new diets get introduced to human nutrition all the time, like the Atkins diet, keto, vegan, and carnivore diet. This isn't to say that these are fads, but it just shows that knowledge of nutrition is ever-changing. And with the internet being a factor, this can bring a lot of misconstrued information. As quoted by veterinarian Dr. Lisa Freeman, their appeal is based on word of mouth, testimonials, and perceived benefits. In this sense, she's implying that this is just a novel diet that has recently started to gain traction through word of mouth. But is this true? It wasn't but a century ago that the pet food industry introduced what we know today as kibble and canned food. So what did our pets eat before this? To understand this, we have to look back through history. Before the commercial pet food industry, people fed dogs raw meat, bones, and scraps. And before that, they hunted prey animals like their wild cousins because they didn't have humans to rely on for food. The reason that canned and dry pet food was created was for convenience, not necessarily because it was a healthier alternative. However, because it's now formulated to their nutritional needs, it does pose as a balanced diet. In the early 1950s, veterinarian Dr. Ian Billinghurst grew up feeding his family dogs rabbits, raw meat, and food scraps, but transitioned to the idea of feeding commercial dog foods when he entered graduate school in the early 70s. After earning his veterinary degree and going into practice, he began suggesting commercial foods to his clients, but started to become suspicious when he saw his pet patients, as well as his own dogs, become less physically fit, develop more skin problems, and have early onset dental problems. He then began to speculate that it may be the diet causing this. Dr. Billinghurst decided to go back to his roots and feed raw meats and meaty bones to his dogs and immediately saw a difference. After looking into natural diets and reviewing case studies over the next eight to nine years, he wrote his book, Give a Dog a Bone. He stated in his book that there were no more skin problems or dental problems, their feces were less smelly and there were less of them, their breath became pleasant and feeding them was cheaper, both in the cost of food and because they no longer needed expensive drugs or dentistry. After confirming the benefits in his own dogs, he began suggesting it to his clients as well and saw the same positive effects. He then went on to write three more books, Grow Your Pups with Bones, The Barf Diet, and Pointing the Bone at Cancer. As Dr. Freeman mentions, many veterinarians' concerns come from the lack of evidence-based literature and claims of perceived benefits. A big reason for lack of evidence is because there aren't many large organizations, pet food companies, or veterinary schools that want to put their time and money into examining the positive effects of raw food. Why? These companies usually have internally funded studies and food trials to back up their own claims and their food, so they don't have much incentive to do studies on pets fed raw food. Unfortunately, because of this, many veterinarians will not be convinced because they only feel comfortable reciting information that's backed by studies they trust. Nonetheless, there are independent researchers and universities putting out their own studies on the raw diet. For instance, the University of Helsinki has done many studies at this point comparing commercial fed pets and raw fed pets. A recent one provided evidence that feeding a raw diet to puppies under six months of age may reduce the risk of inflammatory bowel disease. So maybe there's some conclusive evidence out there, but there's no arguing that raw meat may contain bacteria or parasites. While these are very real things to be concerned over feeding to your pet, there are ways to safely eliminate the risk. When it comes to bacteria, it's important to note that once you understand the body of a dog, cat, and ferret, it's easier to see that it's actually designed to process foods that have a higher bacterial load. A big indicator of this is that their digestive tract is short and has a highly acidic gastric pH. And bacteria like Salmonella are actually naturally found in the digestive tract of healthy dogs and cats. According to the Morris Institute, 36% of healthy dogs carry Salmonella in their digestive tracts, as well as pet cats. 
The word salmonella actually describes more than 2,600 salmonella serotypes, which may seem like a lot, but less than 100 actually cause salmonellosis in people. Additionally, it's common for humans to handle raw meat when cooking for themselves or family. So practicing the same safe handling precautions with raw pet food will keep the household just as safe. Well, what about parasites? These are of course a very real risk and can be found in raw meat as well as the environment. But when practicing more safe preparation measures, they can be avoided. Tapeworms can be caused by wild animal feces, fleas, and from consuming some meats. Typically wild caught meats, but can also be found in some livestock. To prevent tapeworm infestation in a raw fed pet, don't allow them to scavenge on wild animal feces. And additionally, according to the Mayo Clinic, freeze meat for seven to 10 days at a temperature of negative 31 degrees Fahrenheit or up to four weeks if your freezer only reaches zero degrees Fahrenheit. If this wasn't enough, there's also recent hysteria over antibiotic resistant bacteria in raw meat and that pets that eat this meat will start to become resistant to antibiotics as well. Antibiotic resistant meats are from animals that were given a small dose of antibiotics every day since birth up until about a month before slaughter. So their meats still have residual antibiotics within them. While this is certainly a real concern, the problem doesn't really lie in feeding pets raw meat. It lies in the commercial meat industry and the antibiotic abuse that's somehow allowed. Most pet foods source from these producers. So this issue also lies in the commercial pet food chains as well. What's the solution to this? Buy meats from local farms or that are labeled as antibiotic free and organic at the store. Veterinarian Dr. Karen Becker goes over this topic in much more detail in some of her content. So be sure to check her out. I only touched the surface on bacteria and parasites in this video. So watch these videos to learn more about bacteria, parasites, and raw food.